Hi, I'm Eric Brown with Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and a part of Graham Wealth Partners. Today I'm going to be talking about tax traps and how to avoid them. This is specifically related to investors and your investment portfolio. And really, if you think about it, the biggest risk to investment returns isn't what the market does, isn't inflation, but it's actually taxes because you can lose up to 50% of your gains on taxes and so it's very important that you make sure you're paying attention to what taxes you're paying on your portfolio as well as ways to reduce that tax. So I'll start with the first point. The first point is on portfolio placement. Certain asset classes have different tax treatment. If you're paying income, interest income, you pay a higher tax rate than you would on dividend or capital gains income. And so the strategy with this is if at all possible, you can put interest income inside a registered plan. Because with a registered plan like an RSP or a TFSA, you don't have to pay tax on an annual basis. If you pay the highest tax paying investments inside of a registered plan, then you'll reduce your overall tax bill. Now you can also do that in planning with your corporation too. If you have one of those, there's different assets that have different taxation inside and outside of the corporation. The second thing to think about is when you overload assets in one person's name. So let's say there's a husband and a wife and the wife earns a considerable amount of money more than the husband. And so when she earns this income, she puts it into an account under her name and she's going to pay tax on any gains, any dividends and any interest on that. But what you can do is actually loan some of these assets to your spouse, in this case her husband. And you can loan it at what's called the prescribed rate, which is set by the Government of Canada, or Canada Revenue Agency, and at the moment it's 1%. So you could loan money to your spouse at 1%, and that way the income gets split between the two of you. If you want to look at a strategy like that, please contact a investment or accounting professional. The third thing you need to consider a tax trap that business owners often fall into is not paying attention to the type of tax you're paying on the income inside your corporation. As an example, you actually pay a higher rate of tax on interest income in your corporation than if you were doing it personally. So everyone is entitled to $50,000 of passive income, so that's income not generated in your business, before you have a clawback on your small business tax rate. So you really have to pay close attention to make sure that you're not hitting $50,000 in passive income. So that would include capital gains, interest, dividends, anything that will generate passive income in your corporation. There's a couple things you can think of to take advantage of the tax situation in your corporation. The first would be corporate owned insurance, where you can shelter investments inside of an insurance policy. Individual pension plans, for retirement compensation agreements, corporate class mutual funds. There's a wide variety of things that you need to consider inside your corporation so that you're not getting a clawback on your small business tax rate. The fourth thing you can consider, and this is for everyone, not just business owners, is tax loss selling. And what that means is that if you have an investment that is at a loss, which we all do from time to time, you can sell that investment at a loss to counterbalance a gain that you might have. So let's say you sold an investment and you generated a $50,000 loss. But on another investment, you, it worked out and you had a $50,000 gain. If you use that tax loss of $50,000 and use it to counteract the $50,000 of capital gains that you have, then actually it balances out and you don't have to pay any tax on it. And that's something that you have to pay attention to at the end of the year because it's based on the calendar year. If you want to use it for that tax year, you do have to sell it before the end of the year. And also one thing to consider is there's a certain time frame based on holidays, based on the days that it takes this investment to settle, that it's not on December 31st that it will be sometime before that and it changes from year to year. So make sure that you are aware of that date before you try to use that strategy. The fifth point and last point is to not ignore any strategies out there that might help you reduce your taxes. Some people have certain ideas on whether or not stocks are good, mutual funds are good, bonds are good, 
whether or not all of these things uh, have a point in their portfolio. There are certain things on each of these investments that might benefit you from a tax perspective. As an example, corporate class mutual funds, they give you the ability to defer tax into the future for a certain amount of money in taxable accounts. Or you can put money, like I mentioned before, in, inside of a corporately owned insurance policy or even a personally owned insurance policy that is able to grow tax free. So make sure that you're evaluating options and not just writing them off just because you don't think it, it makes sense actually look at it. How will it impact your tax situation? How much tax will you save? And compare that to the costs of whatever that investment is and the benefits of that investment. And really don't make a decision based solely on tax. It has to fit into your overall situation. But don't just discard things just because you've heard something and haven't done your research. So as a summary, you really have to pay attention to the tax consequences of your investment portfolio. Again, it's not something that you see immediately, but it's something that you see when you do your taxes, whenever that might be, depending on your corporate year end or the tax season. Thanks for watching, and if you like our videos, please like or subscribe. And if you want more information, you can go to www.gramwealth.com.